Hello and welcome back to Dad's Bedtime Stories. Once again, just a big shout out to everyone out there sharing episodes on social media. Keep it up. And as a reminder, we still have a contest going on. If you have an idea for an episode of Dad's Bedtime Stories or a planet that the spaceship should go visit, write to dad.bedtimestories at gmail.com. I gotta tell you, as things stand right now, you have a pretty good chance of winning this contest. But now, we better get on to our episode. This is episode 30, The Dreadful Dragon. And as usual, just lay back in your bed, get comfy, pull those covers over yourself, close your eyes, and imagine yourself doing what the kid in the story does. You wake up in the morning once again, and you walk out to your living room. When you get into the living room, you see something on the television. This just in. A dragon is attacking downtown. Oh, the horror. We need your help. Please, somebody, help us, says the anchor on the newscast. Behind him, you can see a giant dragon shooting fire everywhere, lighting buildings on fire, lighting trees on fire. All of the people are running away and screaming. Oh, no. Spaceship, we have to stop them. Wait a second, I have an idea. This calls for the return of the Dragon Defenders. That is a good idea, says Spaceship from beside you. Should I call them? Uh, yeah, call all my friends and call the dragons. Tell them all that we should meet at the treehouse. Understood says Spaceship. You press the button on your watch that makes a spacesuit fold out over your entire body and you jump up into the air, flying immediately. Spaceship flies after you. You fly straight up high above the clouds in your spacesuit and you start heading towards the treehouse. You pass over lakes and trees and forests and towns and you just watch until eventually you see a gigantic green alien tree in front of you and at the top of the tree is the coolest tree house you've ever seen. You fly and land down at the tree house and before long your friends start to appear each one still with their special spacesuit, landing on the front porch of the treehouse. Then, the portal that you put on the treehouse lights up, and out of the portal, one by one, walk dragons. The first dragon, of course, is Bill. Hey there, how are you? says Bill. Long time no see. I hear you need help with something. We do need help with something, you say. There's a giant dragon attacking downtown, and we need to stop him. I see, says Bill. Well, I think we can handle a little dragon. What do you think, everyone? All of the dragons cheer in unison and shoot huge balls of fire into the air as they cheer. One by one, you and your friends jump on the back of the dragons. The dragons take off into the air, flapping their gigantic wings. Before long, you're high above the clouds looking down at the earth. Eventually, you see downtown. There it is, everyone, you point. You see a huge dragon shooting fire everywhere. You see police and firefighters trying to contain everything, but nobody can really help. Let's get them, dragons. On it, says Bill. You fly around and try to surround the other dragon, but as you get closer, 
you realize that this dragon is massive. It's bigger than all of your dragons combined. You start by flying beside the dragon. Hey dragon, what are you doing? The dragon doesn't answer. It just looks at you, opens its mouth, and a huge stream of fire flies out towards you. Your dragon rolls out of the way and flies underneath it. We need a plan, everyone. Let's try freezing it. That's worked before. Good idea, your friends reply. You all fly on different sides of the dragon. Bit by bit, you start to shoot freeze breath at the dragon. You see ice starting to form on the outside of the dragon. But the dragon just shifts quickly, shakes its body, and the ice breaks and flies everywhere. Well, that didn't work, you say. We need to think of something else. What about that technique that the dino riders use where they get big ropes and wrap it around the legs of the dinosaurs to capture it? That's a great idea, you answer. Spaceship, do you have any rope? Yes, says Spaceship. Well, can you give me some of the rope? Yes, says Spaceship. Suddenly, Spaceship grows just a little bit bigger, opens the back hatch, and a hand pops out carrying a huge thing of rope. You grab it from Spaceship and fly towards one of your friends. You hand your friend the other side of the rope and you slowly start to fly around the dragon, looping the rope around its body and trying to get its wings. The dragon doesn't seem phased by it at all. He just does a spin, shooting you and the other dragon rider away, and then bites the rope and rips it off without any effort at all. So you and your friends continue trying to attack the dragon, hitting it with ice, hitting it with fire, hitting it with lasers from spaceship, but everything just bounces off of it. Its armor's just too strong, you say. We need some sort of other plan. I have an idea. If we get inside the dragon, we should be able to attack it from in there. Maybe its armor won't be as solid on the inside, you suggest. I don't know if that's a good idea, says one of your friends. Well, it's now or never, you say. We're going to have to try it either way. You fly your dragon up towards the head of the other dragon. You get it far in front of it, and then you turn around and start flying straight towards its mouth. The other dragon sees you, realizes what's going on, and opens its mouth, ready to clamp down on you. Bill, when I say go, hit the inside of his mouth with your freeze breath. Got it, says Bill. Just as you approach, you say, Now! Bill shoots his freeze breath, freezing the jaw of the dragon and inside the mouth. You know that he can break through it, but it's just temporary. And while his mouth is stuck open, you jump off of Bill, activating the thrusters on your boots, and you fly straight down the throat of the dragon. It's like a huge water slide, you twist left and right and up and down, avoiding the sides of the dragon's throat. At the end, you see a tunnel, and you pop out and drop to the ground with a huge clunk, which isn't exactly what you were expecting for the inside of a dragon. You look around, and you realize that the inside of the dragon is made of metal and electronics? What? Spaceship pops out of your pocket. I believe this dragon is really a robot. Uh, yeah, that's uh, what I was thinking too, Spaceship. Thanks for that analysis, buddy. No need to be snotty, says Spaceship. Sorry, spaceship, I shouldn't take this out on you, but I'm just stressed out in this situation. Understood, 
towards this spaceship. But anyways, if this is the inside of a robot, who made the robot and who's controlling it? I can answer that question, says a voice from the distance. What? I recognize that voice, you think. And out of the shadows in the distance steps out a Tyrannosaurus Rex human-like creature. Rex, you say. Yes, it is I, Rex. You thought you foiled my plans, but you didn't. I will get you back for all of that, says Rex the dinosaur. Well, I think that's going to be a problem right now, you say, because I brought some friends. You reach into the pocket of your spacesuit and pull out a little mouse that's been inside the entire time. Changer, you say, I think I'm going to need you to become bigger. Changer the Changeling transforms from a mouse into a gigantic bear that's much bigger than Rex the Tyrannosaurus. Oh dear, says Rex the Tyrannosaurus. And then you say spaceship transform into a mechanical robot mech suit thing. Transforming into mechanical robot mech thing says spaceship and he starts to glow and he grows into a giant mechanical robot suit the back of the suit opens up and you step inside it wraps around you and when you close your eyes and open them you have full control over the mech suit and it makes you feel very very powerful you slam your fists together. Then you point one of your arms at Rex and a blaster pops out out of your arm. You ready for this, Rex? Sleep ray, fire. You fire the sleep ray and it smashes against a force field. Rex starts laughing from behind the force field. Then he presses a button and out of the walls come 10 robots. The robots immediately start to attack you and Changer. Changer changes his fists into huge boulder looking things. And he starts to swat the robots one by one, easily breaking them into pieces. You just use your giant mechanical robot arms and do the same. A left and a right and a kick and every now and then a laser blast from your chest just to make things nice and interesting. But while you fight the robots, you see Rex out of the corner of your eye running towards a little doorway. He presses a button, a hatch opens, he jumps inside. And then you see the little thing that he got inside shoot straight out of the dragon and fly away into the distance. He's getting away in an escape pod. You radio your friends to chase after him and they agree, flying off into the distance to try to stop the escape pod. You finish fighting off all of the robots and then you say, spaceship. I think we need to stop this thing. Can you hack into the systems of the robot? I will attempt it, says the spaceship. The spaceship opens up and you crawl out of the back of it. It then shrinks back down into the size of a toy spaceship and flies over to one of the computer terminals on the wall. Two little wires shoot out of the spaceship into the terminals on the wall. You hear a lot of beeping and bopping and booping, and the spaceship says, I have successfully taken control. What would you like me to do with the giant robot dragon? Well, first we have to put out all these fires, you say. Does it have some sort of water or freeze breath? Yes, replies spaceship. Okay, 
fly back over the town and shoot them with the water and freeze breath, a screen pops up in front of you showing you the view of the dragon. You watch it fly over the city and spray it with a huge stream of water. Almost instantly, all of the fires go out. Okay, you say, now let's fly to the middle of nowhere. Flying to middle of nowhere, says the spaceship. After a while, the dragon lands on the ground in the middle of nowhere. Spaceship, get big enough that I can get inside. Doing so now, says spaceship. Spaceship glows and grows until he's just the right size for you and Changer to get inside. Changer quickly shrinks down to the size of a dog again, and you both jump inside the spaceship. As usual, the inside of the spaceship is bigger than the outside. You and Changer go to the control panel. You sit in one seat, and Changer curls up on the seat next to you. Now, spaceship, you say, I'm going to need you to grow really really big. Growing now, says the spaceship. The spaceship glows around you and starts to expand, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You watch as the sides of the spaceship start to impact with the inside of the dragon, and then they keep expanding, crushing the mechanical innards of the dragon. Before long, The dragon starts to break apart and busts into millions of pieces. Spaceship, you say, can you reabsorb this material? Yes, says the spaceship. This will make great matter for other projects. A huge light shines out of the bottom of the spaceship, and slowly all of the debris from the dragon starts to glow and then dematerializes and sucks into the ship. After a while, it's all gone. Wait a second, you say. Couldn't you have just done that in the first place when it was a full-size dragon? I did not know it was metal at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. That lines up, you say. Well, that's all in a good day's work. Wait, my friends, I wonder if they got Rex. Let's go after them. You jump on the back of Bill, who's obviously just been waiting around for you to get there. Bill flies up into the air, flapping his giant dragon wings. You look at your wrist, which has a tiny little screen on it that displays the location of your friends. You give Bill directions. On the way, says Bill. Bill flies through the air. He passes through the clouds and up above them. Before long, you come to your friends. Well, did you guys get him? No, say your friends. He was in like a really fast escape pod. We can't possibly catch him and I have no idea where he went. Rats, you say. Well, we'll get him another time. How about a sleepover in the treehouse tonight? Your friends all cheer. You head back towards the treehouse, and all of the dragons and all of the friends land on the porch. You get out, and the dragons say goodbye, flying back down towards the ground where you've made a perfect home for them. You and your friends go inside. After playing some video games, hanging out, reading books, and playing with toys. You decide it's time for bed. You head to your bunk, pull back the covers and climb inside. You pull the covers up over yourself and the lights turn off. You close your heavy eyes and you allow yourself to start sinking into the bed, starting with your shoulders and then your arms and your legs and last your head and your face. No need to do anything at all. Just notice how comfortable the bed is and enjoy it. If you fall asleep, you fall asleep. Good night.
everyone.